Consider the numbers 1 3rd, 7, and negative 15. To which of the numbers, to which of to which sets of numbers listed below does each of these numbers belong? And they give us a bunch of different sets of numbers. And we could just review these. The natural numbers, and you'll see this used in different contexts some in different places. But for the sake of, for the sake of this video, we'll assume that it's the counting numbers and it does not equal zero. So this is the natural numbers are one, two, three. 4, so on and so forth. We'll assume that the whole numbers are essentially the natural numbers plus 0. So the whole numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth. The integers, we'll assume it's the whole numbers plus the opposite of the natural numbers, or the negative version of the natural numbers. So we would go from ne very negative values to maybe negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth. Rational numbers, these are numbers that can be expressed as the ratio of two integers. So a rational number can be expressed as m over n, where both m and n are integers. And of course, n cannot be, cannot be, n cannot be 0, because anything divided by 0 is not defined. M could be 0. And in fact, 0 is a rational number. Because 0 can be represented as 0 over 1, or really 0 over 2, or 0 over 3. I think you get the idea. Or 0 over negative 5, 537. These are all representations of 0. And you have an integer in the numerator, integer in the denominator. So 0 is definitely a rational number. You just can't have n. You can't have the denominator be 0. Irrational numbers are numbers that cannot be expressed in this way. And so common versions of irrational numbers are numbers that you will never see digits that repeat on, go on and on forever, or have series of sequences of numbers that keep repeating, keep repeating, on and on and on. And examples of rational, irrational numbers are square root of 2 or pi. And you might do the ratio of the circumference to the diameter of a circle, or you might learn about the irrational number e, which is 2.71, and it keeps going, and it doesn't repeat. And then real numbers are really all of these all of these combined. If you combine the irrational numbers and the rational numbers, the irrational and the rational numbers, then you are talking about the real numbers. Every real number is either rational or irrational. So let's classify what we have up here. 1 third. 1 third over here. Let me do that in a different color. So 1 third. 1 third. Is it a natural number? Well, no, it's not. It's not just a natural counting number. Is it a whole number? No, it's not a whole number. It's in fact a fraction. Is it an integer? No, once again, it is not an integer. Is it a rational number? Well, sure it is. It can be represented as 1 over 3. Both 1 and 3 are integers. So 1 third, 1 third is rational. It is rational. And if something is rational, it cannot be irrational. There's nothing that's both rational and irrational. This literally means not rational. And it is also a real number. And it is also a real number. Pretty much all of these are going to be real numbers. Now let's try 7 out. Let's try 7. So the number 7, it is a natural number. It is just a regular counting number. It is a whole number. It is a whole number, because that includes the na any natural number is also going to be a whole number. And anything that is a natural number that's also going to be a whole number is also going to be an integer. So this is also an integer, an integer. And anything that is a natural number, a whole number, or an integer is also going to be a rational number, is also going to be rational. And to see that, you can write 7 as 7 over 1. In fact, you can write any. Any integer as that number over one, which makes it, which hopefully makes it obvious that that is also a rational number. And if it's rational, you can't be irrational. That literally means not rational. And then of course you're going to be real. It's going to be a real number. And you're going to appreciate later on in your mathematical careers why we even go through the trouble of saying it's a real number, because as far as it seems right now, this kind of includes. All numbers. What you're going to see in the future is we're going to start defining numbers that don't fall into this category, and they're a little bit philosophically interesting as well. But anyway, back to the problem. We have negative 15. Negative 15. Negative 15 is not a natural number. It's a negative number, so it's not a natural number. Natural number is only the positive, the positive integers, we could say. Whole number. It's not a whole number because that's just the natural numbers and zeros. It is an integer. 
It is an integer. It is the opposite of positive 15. It is an integer. So it is an integer. It is rational. It can be represented as 15 over 1. So it is rational. And because it is rational, it cannot be irrational. And of course, it is also real. And we are done.